Yo, what is good people? Ben from Lover of Tech and we are back with another video. This time, camera comparison. Pixel 7 Pro versus the Galaxy S22 Ultra. And let me tell you, this is going to be a big one because the Pixel 7 Pro is said to be bringing some major improvements here. You can see right now, we are starting the selfie camera in 4K UHD 60 frames a second, which is now finally available. So we're going to test everything in daylight and low light for photos and videos. But yep, let's get into this camera comparison. Let's do a quick breakdown of the camera hardware and specs. Starting with the Pixel 7 Pro, it does have an all new 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 50 megapixel main sensor, and an improved 48 megapixel 5X optical zoom, and a 10.8 megapixel selfie. Moving over to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you do have a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 108 megapixel main sensor, a 10 megapixel 3X zoom, and also a 10 megapixel 10X zoom, and a 40 megapixel selfie. The best way to watch this camera comparison is at the highest resolution with headphones in 4K. There will be chapters in the video, but I highly recommend you sit back, you watch all through, and use the chapters to refer to at another time. Without the way, let's continue with the camera comparison. Now we're starting the selfie video, and we're seeing how the performance is like. Now in 4K UHD, 60 frames a second, finally on the Pixel 7 Pro, and seeing how the image quality, stabilization, and dynamic range is like. Quick run. Now we're in the 4K UHD, 30 frames a second video recorder mode. We're pretty much seeing how the dynamic range, the image quality, and the detail changes, as well as the stabilization at the high resolution, but at the 30 frames a second mode. And again, the speech enhancer is enabled on the Pixel 7 Pro, and we're going to see how the stabilization is like. Quick run. Now we've dropped down to the 1080p 30 frames a second video recording mode, but with a catch, the Galaxy S22 Ultra is in the video portrait mode where you can see the background blur. And yes, the Pixel 7 Pro does have video portrait mode, but it is limited to just the main 50 megapixel camera at the back. You can't do it on the selfie, which is such a missed opportunity, but here is the difference nonetheless. So we are now in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the rear cameras. Basically seeing how the image quality is like, especially on the day like this, the dynamic range, the detail and stabilization. Quick run. We're going to switch to the ultra wide, ultra wide. It looks like finally the Pixel does have a 0.5x magnification and a wider field of view. And let's see how the image quality, dynamic range, and stabilization is also like here as well. It's a detail. Big run. Let's move over to the new 2x mode. Compare that to the 3x on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. to the new 5X. There is a slight judder and delay to switching compared to the 10X. And let's see how the 10X, if we digitally zoom in on the pixel slack. I'm gonna walk a little bit slowly here so we get the best frame rate possible. We're going to move over to the main sensor again. Apologies, that's the ultra wide. Both these phones give you the option to pause while you're recording on the same clip and continue, as well as take pictures. And one advantage you still have on Samsung is you can switch to the selfie camera while recording in 4K 30 frames a second on the same clip. This is still very useful and offers one of, if not the most seamless video recording experience on a smartphone. 
So we are now in 4K UHD, 60 frames a second. And again, this is just to see if there's a change in image quality, dynamic range and stabilization on both phones. The Pixel 7 has got an ace up its sleeve when it comes to the 4K 60 frames a second video recording capabilities. Let's do the main camera first and then we see how the stabilization is like. Quick run. Now just for demonstration purposes, most smartphones when recorded in 4K 60, even if they can record on the other lenses, you have to stop completely recording and then start again on the other lens. But look at this on a Pixel 6 Pro, Pixel 7 Pro, sorry. In 4K 60, you can smoothly zoom through all the focal lengths, ultra wide, 1X, 2X, and then the 5X optical zoom. This is personally the first smartphone I've used that gives you such a seamless video recording experience in 4K 60 frames a second, and I'm still thoroughly impressed. One advantage I will give to the Galaxy S22 Ultra on a fair one is that even in 4K 60, although you have to stop recording to start on a different lens at the back, you can still flip to the selfie, which is still very useful. So we're testing out 4K UHD 60 frames a second on the ultra wide, just because the Galaxy S22 Ultra does need to stop and switch to the ultra wide for it to continue. Quick run. Again, praise to the Pixel 7 Pro finally having a seamless 4K 60 frames a second recording where you can switch between all the focal lengths without having to stop recording and continue. Yes, I do wish you could switch to the selfie, but this is a great place to be. This is just a quick showcase and demonstration of 8K, 24 frames a second on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Again, that's not available on the Pixel 7 Pro. It's a very niche shooting mode as it does come with a very heavy crop. High rolling shutter, no video stabilization, but it's there. So this is the active stabilization on a Pixel 7 Pro versus the super stable on the S22 Ultra. Both are limited to just 1080p 30 frames a second and only work on the ultra wide angle camera. Let's see how they work with a serious run. So we are now in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recording mode on the main camera sensor. Now with just me in there as a subject, seeing how it behaves with the skin tone, detail, dynamic range, colors, and seeing the image quality overall. We're still in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode, but now on the ultra wide angle lens, seeing how the image quality changes, distortion, stabilization, detail, colors, and the image overall. Quick test in 4K UHD 60 frames a second on the main rear camera. Just with being the subject, seeing how the image quality overall is like. And we are now finally in the video portrait mode, AKA the cinematic blur video on the Pixel 7 Pro. And it specifically shoots this at 1080p 24 frames a second, where the Galaxy S22 Ultra is 1080p 30 frames a second, we're on the main camera lens, and the Pixel 7 Pro is limited to just the main camera lens in this shooting mode. Now we are in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode 
on the rear cameras for the Pixel 7 Pro and the Galaxy S22 Ultra and just seeing how the low light performance is like. Now we're going to switch to the ultra wide. We're going to come back to the main sensor. Two X, three X. We're going to do 5x, 10x. I want to come back to the main sensor. Oh, just the ultra wide. Now for the 4K 30 frames a second selfie low light video. Just seeing how the image quality is like. Let's move over to photos starting with the daytime landscape shots. Looking at the ultra wide, you can clearly see the Galaxy S22 Ultra has more of a vibrant image and handles the overall exposure from the sound very well. The Pixel 7 Pro on the other hand pushes more shadows while maintaining a more neutral color temperature and a slightly wider field of view. The same characteristics carry over to the main wide sensor with the Galaxy S22 Ultra having a more vibrant image while the Pixel 7 Pro is more neutral and pushes more shadows. Comparing the two X zoom on a Pixel 7 Pro versus the free X zoom on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, at the cost of pushing for more shadows, the Pixel 7 Pro does look softer compared to the S22 Ultra. On this overcast day, showcasing the extended zoom mode on both the Pixel 7 Pro and S22 Ultra, starting from the ultra wide through to the 2X, 3X, 5X, 10X, 20X, 30X, and up to the 100X mode, you can see the Pixel 7 Pro holds up really well considering the Galaxy S22 Ultra is working with two optical lenses at 3x and 10x with its quad camera system. Macro mode finally sees its first introduction to a Pixel flagship device with the Pixel 7 Pro and it looks to work really well with full control using an on-screen toggle to enable and disable it. When we move over to the next set of landscape shots, you can again see from the ultra wide that the Galaxy S22 Ultra handles exposure control on the sun better with more vibrancy. The Pixel 7 Pro has less of a lens flare coming through and pushes more shadows with a more neutral tone. When moving over to the main sensor, things are pretty much the same but with slightly more sharper of an image on the S22 Ultra. With the 2X zoom versus the 3X zoom, the S22 Ultra does look better overall. Let's now look at the selfies and both the Pixel 7 Pro and the S22 Ultra can do a standard and wider field of view for the selfie. Starting with the standard, the Pixel 7 Pro nails it when it comes to skin tones and overall detail, while the S22 Ultra produces a more natural background blur and a more accurate color representation of my jumper with good overall detail. In terms of the wider angle selfie, the Pixel 7 Pro does have a wider field of view and captures more of the scene. Portrait mode keeps the same characteristics as before in terms of colors and detail, while both absolutely nail it in edge detection and blur. These last set of daylight shots with the rear cameras with me as a subject of focus, start with the ultra wide, I like the look of the Pixel 7 Pro overall, which also looks to keep more detail on my face. Same goes for when we move over to the main wide sensor. Yes, the S22 Ultra produces more accurate color representation of my jumper, but for the representation of my skin, the Pixel 7 Pro is doing a much better job. Framing and comparing the 2X zoom and the 3X zoom, the Pixel 7 Pro is doing a lot better than I was expecting and holds great detail while using the main sensor to zoom. Last is the portrait mode and in the wide mode, the Pixel 7 Pro is more around 1.33x 
meaning the S22 Ultra does have a wider field of view and a more natural background blur fall off. I was hoping for an improvement to the 2X mode in portrait mode on the Pixel, but the S22 Ultra in the 3X portrait mode looks much better, especially when considering the excellent edge detection and the better detail overall. Time for some low light images starting with the landscape shots and looking at the ultra wide, the Pixel 7 Pro is much better when it comes to exposure with better detail overall but it does come at the cost of slightly more noise compared to the S22 Ultra. Moving over to the main sensor, fins even out better for the Galaxy S22 Ultra, but the look of the Pixel 7 Pro is still much preferred. Comparing the 2X zoom and the 3X zoom mode, the Pixel 7 Pro looks better with less noise and just an overall cleaner image. For the 5X versus the 10X, and also both the 10X mode on the Pixel 7 Pro and the S22 Ultra, the clarity is good on both devices, with the Pixel having a cooler image. In this super extreme low light situation, without night mode active, the ultra wide is not usable at all on both, and with maybe slightly better exposure on the Pixel 7 Pro. The main sensor without night mode, the S22 Ultra does have a brighter image, but with more noise, whereas the Pixel 7 Pro is cleaner and holds a more nighttime look. Night mode on the main sensor holds very well on both with a slightly warmer look on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. The Pixel 7 Pro does have an astrophotography mode for a long four minute capture time for an even cleaner image. The low light selfies are captured in the normal, then with night mode and then with the front screen flash and did the same with the portrait mode as well. Both do have the ability to use night mode and portrait mode together on the selfie to produce great results. So let me know which one you prefer in the comment section below. Last set of low light shots with the rear cameras with me as a subject. There is more noise on the Pixel 7 Pro with slightly more detail. Wow, the S22 Ultra is cleaner, but slightly softer when it comes to the ultra wide. The main sensor on the other hand is a lot brighter when it comes to exposure on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, but I actually prefer the more preserved look of nighttime on the Pixel 7 Pro. The 2X versus the 3X is an interesting one with the Pixel 7 Pro doing well when it comes to processing while cropping on the main sensor compared to the 3X on the S22 Ultra, which although has more noise, does have more reach and still overall good detail. Night mode improves things with now a brighter image on the Pixel 7 Pro. And wow, if you compare it to the S22 Ultra, looks to preserve a more night look which I do like. The main sensor with night mode is spot on for both phones with the Pixel 7 Pro pushing a slightly warmer look. Night mode on the 2X is better here on the Pixel 7 Pro compared to the 3X zoom on the S22 Ultra. Portrait mode now to finish things off and without night mode active with me as a subject of focus, the Pixel 7 Pro is doing a better job. The Pixel 7 Pro still keeps the advantage with the 2X zoom in portrait mode compared to the 3X zoom on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Night mode with portrait mode active together improves things greatly when it comes to exposure on both devices with the Pixel 7 Pro, having a slightly better output when it comes to detail, even in the 2X zoom mode. Let's summarize the video performance and I have to say, I am thoroughly impressed with the improvements of video on the Pixel 7 Pro and in more ways than others, it is actually class leading in my opinion. With selfie video, for example, it's great to finally see 4K 60 frames a second on the Pixel 7 Pro. And in fact, across 60 frames and 30 frames in 4K, the Pixel 7 Pro has better dynamic range, more accurate colors to the skin and better stabilization. Now the Galaxy S22 Ultra does have slightly more detail overall and the main advantage it does have is the ability to shoot video portrait mode with background blur on the selfie, which is still missing on the Pixel 7 Pro. Video on the rear camera finally sees 4K 60 frames a second available on all the rear cameras on the Pixel 7 Pro. And this experience of capturing and recording 4K 60 frames a second is what makes the Pixel 7 Pro now class leading in my opinion, because you do not have to stop recording in 4K 60 frames a second to switch between all three rear lenses. You can still pause and continue recording, but unlike the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you still cannot switch to the selfie while recording on the same clip. Whether you find it important or not, the Galaxy S22 Ultra does have the option of 8K 24 frames a second. And although you can record in the new cinematic video blur on the Pixel 7 Pro, it is limited to just the main sensor at the back while the S22 Ultra can also record on the 3X zoom as well as the selfie. And it does give you the option to change the blur intensity before you start recording. Low light video on both are near enough even when it comes to exposure with slightly more detail 
on the Pixel 7 Pro at a cost of slightly more noise. I still recommend using the main sensor on both as the ultra wide does lose a lot of light and detail. Audio performance is great on both and with speech enhancer working in more recording modes on the Pixel 7 Pro, it does isolate your voice a lot better. That is it with this ultimate camera comparison between the Pixel 7 Pro versus the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.